You can walk into the flames and you should never be afraid Cause you are the master of your disaster Come on, come on, go get what you're after On a patch of dirt on the edge of the Mojave Desert in Southern California, thousands of people come together to pre-enact the end of the world. This is a deeper look at the survivors of Wasteland Weekend 2018. Wasteland 2018 was amazing. We had just such an incredible leveling up. First timers to veterans, everybody just took it to the next level. And I know I say that every year, but this year it's what everybody was saying. ninth year that Wasteland Weekend has been happening. We have so many different people from so many different walks of life here. That's really what makes it exciting. All the things that you want to be here are here. You just have to look for them. And you don't have to look hard. The amount of things that go on here, I mean from the live bands to the DJs to fire spinners and costume contests and remote control car contests and the jugger match and all these sideshows and carnival acts and it, it's just unbelievable. Fight, fight in the blackest of nights you can't see. There is now no way for you to come to Wasteland to see everything. It's just not possible. We had more fire, more cars, more camps, more costumes, more music, more everything. Including over 200 tribe camps and vendors all bringing their own flavor to the city. And if that's not enough, Wasteland Weekend is the largest gathering of Mad Max inspired vehicles in the world. Here, the odd is the fascinating, and the destroyed is beautiful. These wastelanders camp in the desert for a week dressed in tattered costumes and sleeping in makeshift camps, eating dusty food and trying to stay cool in the 100 degree heat of the Mojave Desert. It might just seem a bit crazy. Any Wastelander will tell you, it is. See that guy on stage dressed as Lord Humongous DJing the opening night party? Well, his name is Jim. He's a pool guy. Folks come to Wasteland to escape the real world for a while, to be part of something different and new. When you're here, it's like walking into a movie or a video game. For some, this is the event they've been waiting for. May of 2015, I first heard the words Wasteland Weekend. And I saw what was going on and said, oh my God, my people, why didn't you call me? This is our spot, uh, Fallout themed Red Rocket Garage. We throw parties and do assorted uh, bits of fun and debauchery in here. From gas stations to pool halls, many of the Wasteland tribes offer a place to hang out. This is the year of the lounge. There are literally hundreds of lounges across all this area. Various uh, interactive exhibits, activities, games going on, challenges every night. Yeah, it's the year of the lounge. There are many groups in Wasteland Weekend that offer hospitality, offer a place to get out of the sun. The rec room is just really designed to be what I think the Wasteland is about, is community. We decided to make a place where people could come and hang out and be with their friends. This is a hub that we hope everyone can use to make sure that they have the best event possible. If I had to pick something that I'm most proud of in the outpost, it would probably be this shelf here because it took a lot of effort to get it to work right and to get it to work in the sand and the desert and everything like that. But when you pull this book right here, it reveals our VIP room. When you go to Wasteland, you feel like you're in a different world. It's the feeling of immersion. It's when you get here, you feel like you're part of something and that you're not in the real world anymore. And so when I built this, I wanted to help add to that. I tried to make the Atoll look as spot on to Gregor's power from the movie as I could in its own wasteland fashion. A while back, somebody bought 
the boat from Waterworld and made it into a set piece. So we now kind of have all these boats landlocked in sandy dry dock uh, in this kind of little Waterworld corner of the desert. This is the Restorationists. Uh, we bring religion to the waste, to these heathen masses. What we do is we get people dirty. And that's actually what we're doing right over here right now. So the concept of the den was a red light district built on an alley. We have our entrance, which is our two go-go cage trailers backed up next to each other. You come down a tiny little alley. First thing you see is the Loki Pokey, which is our uh, tattoo parlor, which you have to have in a crappy alley. Then we have the Hogs Camp for the Vibrator Race guys, uh, slag races as they call it. We have Uncle Zeke's Pit Stop, which has their own bar and distillery. Chug and Plug, who is our main bar, they pretty much service everybody in the den. And then we have the Snake Eyes Lounge, which is our hookah lounge. Everyone brought it 125% day one. And it, it's just been an amazing experience. So the Wasteland Communication Corporation has been in Wasteland City since 2011. Uh, we started out with a small ham radio shack that was all we had. And then we just started expanding into different things. And by 2013, we had the post office going. Through here is the offices of the Wastelanders, we call the newsroom, run by the illustrious Deadline. Looks pretty busy. Hello. We report so good. We do good words. Speaking of news stories, here's a guy who stands a few stories tall. A few months before Wasteland, uh, Nathan Jones got in touch with me and wanted to come out and check out what we were doing out here. And if that weren't amazing enough, he got in touch with his friend, Dr. George Miller, who said, hey, um, yeah, I can let you borrow the original screen used costume to wear out in the Mojave Desert. Just to see him become the character again right before our eyes was, was amazing. Look at that feels good. <laughs> Well, my name's Nathan Jones, and I play Butcher's Directors and Mad Max Fury Road. Here in Wasteland, weekend, it's amazing. It's really intense. Uh, everyone gets into it, and it's like, it's like it's gonna be a lot of fun. Uh, just the amount of effort everyone puts into getting into character and the car vehicles, it, the size, it, it's massive. My name is Max, Wasteland Weekend 2018. We just got to meet Rictus. It was pretty great. Not pretty mediocre. Awesome. What I can say is that to have Nathan Jones here is not only a profound honor for the entire event, it's a huge honor for us at the Order of the Eight since he is one of us by design. We are War Boys! War Boys! I'm a crazy War Boys! War Boys! Ukashima, I'm a crazy War Boys! War Boys! Getting all these costumes to look right out of a movie is tough work. And luckily, there's an expert here to show off a few techniques. You end up with some really nice textured seams. Here at Wasteland Weekend 2018, we were lucky enough to have Mark Cordry come over from the UK and teach some amazing distressing and aging techniques that he uses on props and costumes. And from the YouTube channel Nuclear Snail, we were lucky to have Dimitri come over, and he's also teaching some workshops at Wasteland this year. <laughs> and hosting, that's right, a codpiece contest. And if your codpiece isn't up to snuff, you can always compensate with a monster ride. These custom Mad Max vehicles are made in true wasteland fashion, with real rusting metal, recycled parts, and a survivalist instinct. In the early years, they numbered a few dozen. Now there's hundreds. Uh, 1969 Toyota FJ40. And this is kind of a more of a survivalist rig. V6. This here is my stagecoach, and it's a badass ride. What you'll find.
find in Bartertown is actually very unique items that are really specific to the post-apocalyptic style. I think when people are coming into the city, they want to be a part of it. They want to create their outfit even more as they go. And so it's kind of like a build-up, if you will. It's like when you walk into Disneyland, you're on Main Street and you're headed right for the castle. And that's our castle. So, you know. Okay, there's no castle, but there are city gates and armored knights, or uh, gladiators, fighting in no-holds-barred cage matches surrounded by fans hungry for violence. We're introducing a new thing. The new thing is live steel. A lot of us have different backgrounds. In the real world, we come from HMB, live steel combat, professional wrestling, some SCA guys, Empire Medieval Pursuits. Ah, fuck it. We just like hitting people. <laughs> There's an energy that comes from the people. I mean, they are, it's its not a golf clap. Oh, you know, well played, what a nice match. They want blood. They throw that energy out there and you feed off that energy. The louder they are, the crazier and stupider you get with each other. Nearby, Wastelanders cheer on a game of Jugger, a fully armed post-apocalyptic version of football, or sign up to battle in the Thunderdome, suspended on bungee cords while metal music screams in the background. At the main stage, you'll find some of the strangest musicians on the planet playing everything from Celtic music, punk, industrial, to straight up apaca rock bands singing songs about bombs, engines, and the end of the world. All while two huge flamethrowers pump fireballs 20 feet into the night sky. Wastelanders are a special breed. They spend months building cars, making costumes, designing camps, all building up to one action-packed week in the desert. There's Mad Max and Fallout fans, end-of-the-world preppers, survivalists, and some folks who can't seem to fit in anywhere else. This is where they all come to forget about the real world for a while and rebuild civilization the way they want to. time a new uh, attendee has arrived in our camp I have made sure to say welcome home to them because the people here are the most generous and kind people um, and every single time I come out here I just am super happy and ecstatic to be around family <laughs> and I'm all, you know, <laughs> awkward Millie <laughs>